Do you think you understand perspective? Are you ready to take the test? In this drawing, I've committed six of the most common perspective mistakes I see in drawings. The question is, can you see them? And if you do see them, can you identify what the problem is? My suggestion is to hit pause, go and get some pen and paper, maybe even a ruler, and then come back and see how many of these six mistakes can you spot and then tell me why. My hint is look for something that doesn't seem quite right to you and then try and work out why it's not quite right. And if you make it to the end of the video, I'll redraw this scene for you with all those mistakes corrected. Hit pause, take the test, and then I'll come back and I'll go through the six points and explain exactly why there's a problem and what the impact is on our drawing. Let's go. Our first mistake is the type of perspective used. Here we have a scene where we have two buildings that we're looking front on to. And we know we're looking front on to because there's a straight line across the bottom and all these horizontal lines are straight. The scale in both of them is the same. These three lampposts out front are also in a straight line and they're all the same size. What does that mean for perspective? When we look at objects straight on, we have one point perspective. All the perspective angles go to one point on our eye level or horizon. Now that point could be anywhere. It could be between the two objects, which would have them look something like this. It could be to one side and give us a perspective that looks more like this. It could be to one side behind one of our structures. And give us something like this. And of course, we could be looking to the side and slightly down or slightly up as well. But what we always have is sides that are either hidden, as in this view, sides that come together, as in this view with these two sides, or sides that go in the same direction, as in these two. What we don't get is sides that go in two different directions. Sides that go in two different directions, or two-point perspective, because we have two vanishing points, is when we look at an object side on from a corner. And so neither of the sides are parallel to us as the viewer or to the camera. So what we have here are two fronts of buildings straight onto us, but adopting the perspective pattern of two-point perspective, which only applies if we're looking at one building from an angle. If we were looking at these two buildings in two-point perspective, then the second building would still be following the same pattern. So that's the first big mistake. We're looking front on at something, but one point perspective is not used. Did you get that? What's our second big mistake? If you've watched a few of my videos, you've probably been able to guess that I would mess around with eye level because I think eye level is the most important thing to understand with perspective, way more important than vanishing points. So eye level is the point where across an entire drawing, we have the level of the person's eyes viewing the scene or of the camera that took the photo. And what we get is any horizontal lines, regardless of which wall of the building they're on, will actually become a horizontal line across our drawing. In this drawing, we can see that this lower part of the upper sash window is at eye level and forms a straight line across this entire building. It also goes straight across the eyes of the people that we have in the scene, which is also how eye level affects a scene. Let's look at our second building. And we have the same lower part of the upper sash window in this building. We only have one eye level in any scene, regardless of what perspective is being used. So it should just continue across. But when we put this line across, we see in fact that this upper sash window line doesn't remain horizontal, but actually angles up. So where on this wall will we find a horizontal line? Well, it's going to be between this angle angling down and this angle angling up. 
So it's going to be about here. This is a very common problem where we have different eye levels, sometimes in the one building and sometimes across several buildings. And because various elements of perspective are determined by where the eye level is, it now means we have an inconsistency in different parts of our drawing, which is often why drawing doesn't quite look right. It's because eye level is not consistent across the whole drawing. If this could be a problem for you, why not have a look at one of my numerous eye level perspective videos? So that's the second point, an inconsistent eye level. My third problem is on the left hand side of our drawing. So we'll just slide this across a bit so we can focus more. And it's to do with this row of lampposts. Let's just put our eye level back in and let's look at where the vanishing point would be by using the angles of our building. So this is where the vanishing point is for our building. But if we're to look at these lamp posts, we see in fact that they have a different vanishing point. They have a closer vanishing point. These lines are all a bit thick. We can see that the perspective angles form a vanishing point which is more to the right than the vanishing point that the perspective angles of the building form which is more to the left. And of course they should share the same vanishing point. And it doesn't particularly look as if this row of lamps is parallel to the side of the building. So that's my third point. Having separate vanishing points for different parts of our drawing when we should just have one. Our fourth perspective mistake is on this side of our scene as well. And we'll put eye level back in. We will look again at the perspective angles formed by the building. All the perspective angles on this side of the building should end up at that place. But if we look at this perspective angle here, we can see that it's going to meet up way to the left of our vanishing point. And if we look at the perspective angles above that, we can see that they're really never going to meet, that they're just parallel. And this is a very common mistake I find when I'm looking at other people's drawings. I find the lower part of the building can often really capture the perspective angles fairly accurately. But when you move to a second floor or possibly a tower, suddenly these angles stop going back to the same vanishing point and basically just become parallel to each other as they get higher and higher. And particularly if that part of the building is smaller, such as a tower, not as immediately obvious why it doesn't quite look right. Because in fact, by the time we get to this angle here, it should be angled like that. This lower window should be angled like that. And in my view, what we lose here with this mistake is what I call the visual drama of the more extreme angles. And I think because the angles do become so extreme, we actually can't believe it and we want to flatten them out and make them look a little less extreme. When in fact extreme is what the angle genuinely calls for. Don't lose your way with your perspective angles as you get higher and start to settle for just doing some parallel lines. Keep everything going back to the same vanishing point. For the fifth point, we need to go over to the right side of our drawing. And this is a problem with these windows because they don't allow for foreshortening. And foreshortening is the perspective rule that says the further away an object becomes, the more visually compressed what we see becomes. It's this effect. That says that the further away this wall becomes, the more compressed, in effect, the narrower the things that we see are, things that are the same size. So the width of the windows becomes narrower and the gap between the windows becomes narrower as this wall moves further away. Whereas here, that hasn't really happened. These windows are the same width they're the same width as this one. This is only slightly less on this one. And again, down here, they don't, they don't compress in the way they should for how far down this wall they're going. 
Whereas if we look at this side of our drawing, unfortunately between the downpipe and the lamppost, it's a bit hidden. If we look at these two windows up here, we can see how this space is narrower than this one and how that just looks right in a way that this doesn't. And my sixth perspective problem is to do with the people. And this is the sort of problem that's very easy to get once we confuse our eye level. Because if we look at the left hand side of our drawing where the eye level is correct, it's very easy when we draw figures because if the ground is flat, all of their heads, all of their eyes in fact, of people who are the same size as the person looking or the same level as the camera off the ground, all their eyes will line up in a straight line. Now this obviously won't happen with children. What happens is that as people get further away, the head still lines up, but the feet get higher and higher in effect. And the figures that are closest to us, their feet are lower in the picture. And we can see how with these figures, they all make sense. The scale, the size, the position in relation to our building all make sense. This figure is clearly further away than this corner is. If we draw a straight line across, we can see that these figures are probably in front of whatever wall or window is hidden by this corner of the front part of the house. But if we go to the right hand side of our drawing where the eye level was messed up, we can see that the eye level for the, for the building is here. But because this building's front has been drawn to match this building's front, our heads down here are on the same level and the heads should be in a straight line. But of course, if we draw on a head here and have the feet finish next to the building where the eye level should be, we can see that the figure becomes ridiculously small compared to the building. And this would be an adult figure. But because in effect, visually, the eye level of the front half of the building still connects with the left hand side. But this right hand side doesn't have any eye level rules at all. And of course, the heads don't align here. And the only way that could happen would be if this was sloping uphill, in which case the heads, the further up the hill you got, the higher the heads would become. But that's not the case with this scene. And we know that's not the case because the architecture of the building down here shows us that this is flat ground. Here, eye level was on this line here. But if we align the heads on that, as I've done here, then if we're going to bring the feet down to the proper spot on the ground, we find as the figures really stay much closer to being the same size. If we make eye level where it should be, connected with the closest people to us, the figures become ridiculously small. And this doesn't look quite right. These figures, as you go further along the street, seem to match up a line with the building less and less accurately. Whereas on this side, we don't have a problem at all. In effect, for this building, these figures have eye level here. And for these figures, well, they don't have eye level anywhere. The building has eye level much higher than eye level for here. And so in the end, we've just been popping figures where it kind of looked okay, but then it becomes difficult to get the scale correct in relation to the building and in relation to each other. Not a problem we have when we get the figure perspective in the right place. They're my six points. Did you discover them all? And most importantly, are any of them in your drawings? Some of these mistakes look a little more obvious than others, but all of them create that Hmm, there's something just not quite right about this scene. So I hope this exercise has really helped you to identify where there might be a problem that you haven't been able to put your finger on. So now the only thing to do is to redraw this and draw it correctly. Here we can see them both side by side. And I hope you can agree that the awkwardness with the perspective angles, with the various objects, and with the scale of the various components of this scene are not present in the top one. Did you pass the test? 
I think perspective probably is always going to be a test for most of us. But I hope this process has helped give a little more understanding about how all that perspective theory actually works out in practice when we're drawing. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If you've got to this point and you haven't hit subscribe, why not? Right now I have close to 200 videos filled with the knowledge and the tips and techniques that have helped me draw. I'll see you next time. Bye.